Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. I pray that you have made the choice to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at One Church once again. My brothers and sisters, we're so glad you're connected and tuned in with us. And we pray as always that during today's service, something is said or done that will help and enhance your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Artis J. Buford, pastor here at the One Church in Easley, South Carolina on behalf of myself. Our awesome First Lady, Lady Sharetta M. Buford, the First Family, and the entire One Church Family, One Church Nation, One Church Network. Make some noise in the comments section. We welcome you to worship on today. Enjoy our praise and worship and the word that is to come forth. We pray that today you will be blessed. Amen. <laughs>
Hallelujah. We pray that you are enjoying the music that we pull from the various previous worship experiences as we uh, worship together in this cyber sanctuary on today. Listen, there are a couple of things we want to share with you. So make sure that you are uh, attentive and alert for what's forthcoming. Listen, this coming fourth Saturday, it's our fourth Saturday feeding sponsored in hell by our one church uh, reach one outreach ministry. And we're so excited to be able to give back to our community as you see this coming Saturday July the 27th beginning at 11 a.m. we are feeding the community right here at 817 C East Main Street easily South Carolina they're able to come and get a free meal but we need your help we need some hands to do heaven's work so our outreach ministry they don't they're not gonna pull this load alone one church do me a favor I need for you to text the word reach R E A C H text reach to 864-319-3190 so that you can sign up to help and assist the outreach ministry with their effort as we take one dime out of every dollar we tithe from our tithe and give back to the community to make a difference i'm believing god is going to prosper us in this pandemic and we're going to see his hand move like never before additionally our kids zone has a new worship time you heard it beginning today somebody put today beginning today at 11 our kids zone will be zooming we have moved the time up to better accommodate you and so following our worship experience take a little break give the kids some juice allow them to use the restroom maybe grab a little nap if you will and here it is at 11 45 until 12 30 it's kids zone zoom i want you to log in heather chetney and the entire kids zone staff will be right there welcoming them having some fun in jesus name putting the word right where they need it to be on their level so make sure you tune in one church we're so excited and grateful that we've been able to sustain and maintain and even thrive in the midst of this pandemic and it's because of your giving that we've been able to do that as we prepare to give i want you to ready your not just your hands but your hearts and your head for god to move mightily in this place on today do me a favor you can give several ways you can text to give text the word give g-i-v-e to 864-990-1306 you can use the tithely app you can use our website, www.onesc.online. You can even put it in the mail, P.O. Box 789, Easley, South Carolina, 29641. However you do it, I want you to do it. Get that seed ready. Get it in your hand. Let's pray to God as we look for him to do something mightily, even in the midst of this crazy pandemic. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to give. Bless us now as we are seeking to be faithful servants over what you've given our hands stewardship over. We love you and we thank you. Bless it in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Listen, I love you. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, today's worship service and we're getting ready to go into the word. I believe today you're going to be blessed. Enjoy.
Hallelujah. Let's go into the word of the Lord on today. Um, join me in Matthew chapter five, beginning at verse number 13. Matthew chapter five, beginning at verse number 13. It is our prayers always that something is said or done during this service that will help and enhance your walk with the Lord. We're so grateful and glad that you're connected with us. Once again, I'm Pastor Artis Buford of the One Church here in Easley, South Carolina, and we're excited to share a word from the Lord on, with you on today. Matthew chapter 5 beginning with verse number 13 and we'll look down to verse number 16 coming from the New King James Version and we will uplift a couple of additional translations just so you can hear it from uh, from different different sounds. Matthew 5 and 13 New King James reads like this. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand that it gives light to all those who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. Let's look at the New Living Translation. Same verses. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? How can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, on a lampstand, is placed instead a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your father in heaven and then finally let's look at the message bible let me tell you why you are here you're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the god flavors of this earth if you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Verses 14 through 16. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be the light, bringing out the God colors of the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a basket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be gracious with your lives. Be opening to others. Be opening up to, by opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God this generous father in heaven and the church said amen my brothers and sisters for the time that is ours to share together from this small portion of god's powerfully printed word i want to preach and teach that the spirit of god may govern and guide with this thought in our minds don't stop shining don't stop shining let's pray prior to preaching father breathe on your words that we might hear you Pull fresh water from an old well that we might taste you. Touch us now, O oh God, that we might be with you. We love you and we thank you. Do what only you can do. Speak now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't stop shining. We need your amens, your hallelujahs, your thumbs up, and your hearts in the comment section on today. When we step on to and into the scene of the scripture set here in Matthew chapter five, we observe Jesus on the slope mountain summit of Capernaum, talking, teaching and tutoring a crowd. Jesus is talking, teaching and tutoring those who have taken seriously or who would take seriously the life and service of a disciple, a believer and a follower of Jesus. One of my favorite passages of scripture, I preached this text and from different perspectives many times here, we see Jesus guiding those who have gathered through his God's new discipleship orientation program. And for 107 verses, our savior took the mandate that was the Mosaic law, passed it through the prism of his glorious mind and divinely divided and diffused the law into directives for discipleship. 
that are designed to guide, guard, and govern the life of the Christian believer. As he talks, teaches, and tutors, he gives something both informational and inspirational. He does not just call to those to give their life to Christ, but moreover, he talks to them uh, who will live a more fulfilled life in Christ. Therefore, the sermon is not necessarily an evangelistic sermon by which Jesus is calling people to repentance to be saved. Instead, it's a sermon about discipleship where he entreats, encourages and imparts into the believer principles and practices of kingdom living. In essence, this section of scripture could be classified as a Christian code of conduct for all who desire to please God in their life and in their living. It was addressed to people with heavenly hopes but human hands. And to the novice who doesn't know any better, the sermon in its entirety may seem too lengthy, too lofty, or unlikely to live by. But can I give you some hope on today that don't you get down don't you get down discouraged or detoured because the Lord's entreating commands are always accompanied by his enabling power. Let me say that one more time. That when we read the Bible and begin to extrapolate and uh, expound the truths that dwell therein, we don't need to get discouraged or get down or get detoured and feeling that these are principles and practices and precepts that are too difficult for us to live by. Instead, we must understand that the Lord's entreating commands are always accompanied by his enabling power. No one alone can accomplish and achieve these attributes of Jesus's announcement, except he has God's Holy Spirit sustaining, governing and guiding his life. Yes, we need God's spirit in us to live out God's word through us. In Matthew chapter five, Jesus is speaking on assignment to the assignment of those who will follow him in his speech. He gives an information and inspiration to this assembly about how to live a godly life. Our savior, Jesus says, here it is. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. If you've been around one church, you've heard this before. And in this understanding, we see our significance and contributions of Christian service. We have been called, commissioned, and commanded by the Christ. Here it is, to be agents of resistance and reversal. Let me make that plain. Well, the only reason there's a need for salt and light is if, it, is if there is decay and darkness. If there is no decay, there's no need for salt. And if there's no need for, and if, and if there's no darkness, there's no need for light. So if Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world, then there must mean that there is decay in the earth and darkness in the world. And as a result, we are to be the salt and to light over them both, the light over them both. Therefore, we are to resist decay and reverse darkness, salt and light. Notice, if you will, the specificity given by the Savior. He did not just say you are the salt of the world and you are the light of the earth. But Jesus declares with definitive demarcation that we as his faithful and faith filled followers are to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Now, you may feel I'm splitting hairs with this and my handling of heaven's heroes words. But let me show you what I see so you can see it for yourself. Jesus says we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world for salt. My brothers and sisters is a preservative that prevents decay and light is a power that precludes darkness. One prevents and the other produces Salt prevents decline and decay, decay, while light produces energy and illuminescence. Salt prevents while light 
produces. Let me do it like this. Salt traps while light transcends. Salt contains while light counteracts. Salt holds while light heralds. Salt stops while light spreads. Salt is of the earth. Light is of the atmosphere. One deals with things down and around while, uh, while the other deals with things up and above. Salt deals with what's around while light deals with what's above. Salt handles and holds the geography while light spreads and shine in the cosmos in the cosmos Jesus says you are the salt of the earth the Greek word for salt is gi gi uh, means land matter earth soil it is the gi from which we get geo which comes uh, into play as the root of our word geography which is the grafting the scaling and the scoping of earth and land geography so Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth the gi the land the soil the geographical space around us we are the salt of the soil which means we are to where we are prevent and resist decay the salt of the earth around us but he goes on to say that we are the light of the world, that the word uh, that the word world is the Greek word cosmo, uh, for which we get the word cosmos, cosmo, K-O-S-M-O, K-O-S-M-O, which we get the word cosmos, C-O-S-M-O, which means the atmosphere or the space or the universe around us. And while salt deals with the land, the earth and the soil around us, light deals with the atmosphere, the space and and the area above us because while salt resists decay and prevents decay light removes and reverses and precludes darkness preach artist J Buford teach if you will and here it is Jesus says to his students in his sermon on the mount and to his servants here in this cyber sanctuary that we are called to be the light of the world the power that removes and precludes darkness look at the Messiah's metaphorical mastery in Matthew's manuscript verse 14 be a city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven we have been called to be the light of of the world but what happens when the light goes out and that's what I want to dwell on this morning I want to look at verse 16 and I want to I want to talk to somebody who feel that their light is about to go out because as we look at our culture as we look at our communities even at our churches it seems that instead of shining bright we have some broken bulbs and some dimming lights and where there is no light, darkness doth dwell. What are you talking about, Buford? Just, just look around. Chaos and killing in our communities, that's darkness. Fighting and feuding in our families, darkness. Hurt and hardship in our homes, darkness. Sex, scandal, drugs, and death in our schools, darkness. Calamity and commotion in our churches, darkness. Confusion and craziness amongst Christians, darkness. Racism, sexism, ageism, overzealous patriotism, lies in the White House, State House, Court House, even some in the church house, darkness, darkness. Darkness, darkness. We are living in a dim and dark world that needs the light of the Lord, that needs the light of Jesus. Therefore, we cannot stop shining. Don't stop shining. You see, family, as disciples of the divine, as faithful and faith-filled followers of the Father, as adopted siblings of the Savior, and as branches of the blessed vine of God's vineyard, we must make sure that we don't allow the evil of the enemy to eclipse and to cover the light source from heaven in our hearts, our head, and in our hands. We dealt with the hands on last Sunday with this harvest time. Now we're dealing with the heart and the head on how they come together with this light. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. But God sent me with the word for some weary lights who have let the internal light of the lampstand of your life start to get low. I'm talking to somebody who's having to deal with the devil disguised as a friend. 
that you are spiritually and emotionally fighting like a foe because your spirit has discerned their demonic deeds in an attempt to darken your disposition and dedication to God. I'm talking to somebody who's let the light, uh, who, who I'm, I'm talking to someone whose light is being snuffed out by the way of suffocation from the situations and circumstances that are sucking the wind and the air and the breath out of your life. And like George Foreman, who had that officer, uh, George Floyd, who had that officer's knee on his neck, you're feeling you can't breathe. I'm talking to someone who's having to deal with the darkness of people who don't know you, but don't like you. Dealing with people who talk about you, who talk to you when they're around you, but talk about you when they're not around you. Dealing with people who you already know uh, don't really like you, but they smile and want a whole fake conversation with you. Dealing with crazy, cunning, and conniving co-workers. Sneaky, shifty, and shaky supervisors. Fake, foolish, and finicky friends. Carnal, Christless, and corrupt church folks. I'm talking with somebody who gave somebody the best of you only to receive the worst of them. I'm talking to somebody who is sick and tired of being sick and tired and sad that this time is going to be the last time only to arrive at another time uh, which was the last time before the last time. I'm talking to someone who wants to know what do you do when the lights go out? Well, if life has seemed to eclipse you from the light of the Lord, the first thing you need to understand in dealing with darkness and not being able to stop in, 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 in moving to a place where you don't stop shining. It's the first thing you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, here it is, is the power of perspective. The power of perspective. If we're going to understand how to deal with darkness and not stop shining, we must understand the power of perspective. Put that in the comments section. The power of perspective. The power of perspective. Put that in the comments section. Perspective is not just what you see, but perspective is also how you see. Because the manner in what you see can affect the matter that you see. Preach, Artist Buford. Perspective teaches me when learning how to handle darkness when the lights go out. Because I can't see, because just because I can't see the light doesn't mean the light isn't still shining. <clears throat> That is that, that, that it could be that there is something obstructing my optical observation, preventing me from seeing that which is still shining. You see, the reason our surroundings get dark during eclipse is not because the sun stopped shining, but because something has obstructed the sun's brightness to shine where we are. You see, it's just we're, 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 we're in July right now and next month will mark, I believe, four years that it's been since we've had that, that awesome, wonderful uh, optical display in the sky, that solar, uh, solar eclipse. That, if you recall, it was just a few years ago when the sun and the moon got in direct alignment upon which the moon blacked out the sun. You see, the reason our surroundings get dark during eclipse is not because the sun isn't shining, but because as it is in that example, the moon uniquely, specifically and amazingly placed itself precisely and in parallel position with the sun. And although the sun is still shining, the moon's placement prevents me from partaking of the powerful illumination of the world's bright light. That's $25 worth of word with only 25 cent meaning saying this right here, that although the sun is shining, something blocks and blocks out the brightness by simply getting in the way. Can I push it? Because although the moon blocks the sun, the moon is not as big as the sun. 
Come ride with me the science class. Physics and astronomy teaches us that the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun. 400 times. That the sun is 865,073 miles in diameter, while the moon is 400 times small at just 2,162.4 miles in diameter. In other words, if, if the moon was a small all little over two and a half inch tennis ball then the sun would be a 90 foot trailer Mack truck here it is perspective will make you think one thing is bigger than what it is and another thing is smaller than what it is ride with me and if we are not careful we will give more credit and power to the smaller by treating it as equal and greater than the bigger that's why we have to understand perspective and, un and learn to give credit and honor where it's due because the devil is not as big as the Lord nor is he equal or, or, or the same as the Lord but perspective will have him think us that they make him think make us think that he is on the same plane and perspective and we'll start to treat the devil with the same priority and power that we treat God but I come to let somebody know on today that God is still always and shall be greater than any problem or devil in your life perspective perspective teaches me to understand that something may block me from seeing all of God's glory, but nothing is greater than God's glory. Ooh, we preach artist J. Buford. I got to move. Not only do we must understand perspective, but as we go deeper, we must understand, my brothers and sisters, that it's not always something completely bad and evil that will eclipse the light of the Lord. That sometimes it is something that is ordinarily, ordinarily deemed good that gets in the way. But because it's in the wrong position and in front of the wrong thing, it causes a darkness in our lives. OK, I got I got I, I got to explain that. Let me give it to you right here. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 13 through 19, that on the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon, which the Bible calls the great lights. Go read it on your own time. I'm not right now doing the sermon that the great light. The greater light, the sun, he placed the rule over the day, but the lesser light, the moon, he placed the rule over the night. Now understand this, that although the moon is the light which governs the darkness of the night, it was still and is still good. Number one, because it was made by God. And number two, it was stated by God that as he looked, he said it was good. Here it is. God made the sun and the moon. One governs the day, one governs the night. But although the moon governs the night, it is a light that God still deemed to be good. And so how can something good that's created by God called darkness and difficulty? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell it to you that when it was taken, that when something is taken from its proper position and placed in front of what was made to be greater, it will cause darkness and difficulty in our lives. Because although it is good for us when moved and positioned differently from its d divine design and space, it can cause darkness around us. That everything that causes darkness in your life is not the e is not the eternally evil things within your life. But it could be my brothers and sisters that there are some stuff that is good that when it's moved from its proper proper place and reposition in front of what was made and intended to be greater, that darkness will come. If you're going to stop shining, the first thing you need to understand is the power of perspective. But I got to move not only. Only must we, we must we understand the power of perspective. Point number two, we must understand the priority of position, the priority of position. Let's look at the text. Jesus says, verse number 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives a light to all those who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Here it is. Notice, if you will, the position, the position, the position, the position of the lampstand. Yeah, the priority of position. 
where we are is key and critical to how we are seen and how we see. You see, Jesus said that we were purposefully and intentionally positioned in a place to project light, not hidden, but on display. You see, he says a light isn't put under a basket, but it's put on a lampstand so that it gives light to the entire house. You don't take the light that is intended to give light to the house and put it in a place where the light is not seen because then it is not able to execute the purpose of its existence. Preach artist Jay Buford. That in other words, my brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? That it's no accident, incident, or coincidence that God has placed, poised, and positioned you on purpose in the place that you are right now because our Father has providentially planted you on the planet for a purpose to perform and that purpose is to shine and project. So you need to understand Understand there's a priority in projection that the reason you are there is so somebody can see the light the reason you are there is so that you can shine bright the reason you are there is so that God can allow the light that is within you to shine right out of you because you can't project on the outside what's not on the inside because what's on the inside of a projector projects out to the outside of the projector so we have to have the light of God on the inside so that we can project to all who will see on the outside. Ooh, I got to keep moving. Can I tell you something? That in this season, the world doesn't need camouflaged Christians. Yes, Lord. Here we go. The world does not need camouflaged Christians blending in so as to not be seen trying to hide and hold the heaven that's on the inside of them. That this is no time for hiding under the basket of brokenness, but instead shining because of the Savior and Sovereign's love towards us all. God didn't purposefully put the greatness of who you are in connection to who he is inside of you so that it is hidden. Uh, but he put it in there so that it could be seen by all. He put it in you and he also put you in him. And position you so that everyone would be able to see you see your glory. Let's go deeper. You see, position is key and critical because distancing in positioning can cause difficulty. Position doesn't just deal with where I am, but it also deals with where God is in relation to me. Because our location and our rotation will allow opportunity for occasional obstruction and interference uh, from God. Let me lean on that eclipse metaphor and analogy one more time. You see, position doesn't just deal with where I am, but, but position also deals with where God is in relation to me. And an eclipse happens when something around me comes in between the sun and me in which it causes darkness where I am. You see, position is important because like the Earth's relationship with its sun, the S-U-N, which it's constantly and always revolving, our relationship with the eternal sun, S-O-N, should constantly and always be evolving. Did you hear what I said? That just like the Earth is always revolving around the sun, we as believers should always be evolving around who we are in Jesus Christ. That there should, <clears throat> there should not be in the same, that we should not be in the same position today that we were on yesterday. That the evolution and revolution of the proximal relationship with the righteous upon the pivotal cross axis of our lives should reposition our position and disposition in a, man in a manner of spiritual sanctification and anthropomorphic education. Now that's $700 worth of word with the 70 cent meaning that simply means this. When we daily live we should give our lives to God just as we revolve around his son 
we should also evolve in our living as his son, as his sons and daughters. And just like the earth's invisible, invisible axical tilt and spin, we should always be tilted towards God and spinning in righteousness. Preach artist J. Buf. Position is powerful if we are always moving when our position is always changing because God has put us in a way that he is designed for us to remain connected to him and always as his light is all as our light is always flowing up through him and to him. I'll say it like this. I'm reminded of the story of a husband and wife who were riding on their Sunday stroll and the wife leaned over and looked at the husband who was, they were still driving in their first, old pickup truck that they had for years. The wife said, I remember when we first got married, you used to wrap your arm around me as we rolled around town on Sundays, you used to hold me close and tight. I used to whisper sweet nothings in my ear, but now look at you, you over there, and I'm all the way over here. What has happened? The husband can't say nothing at first, but he kept on driving, and finally he got to a stop sign, and he looked at the wife, and he said, he looked over at her and smiled. He said, I ain't moved. I'm still in the same place I was back then, right now that I was back then. Come here, lean in, let me talk to you. Because occasionally what will happen is that we allow the test of time to allow us to ease away from God, and God said, listen, Listen, I'm in the same position now that I was back then. If anything is moved, if anybody's moved, you've moved away from me. And we have to understand that we cannot allow distance to become between God and us because God created us to stay close to him. And when we stay close to him, the light of him that is on the inside of us will shine out through us. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. You cannot stop shining yeah let your light shine before men that they may see his good works your good works and glorify your father it's in heaven it's it's all for his glory you see my brothers and sisters if we're going to not stop shining we don't just need to understand the power of perspective and the priority of position but we need to understand my brothers and sisters it's all to create a purposeful praise yeah a purposeful praise in essence God uses us so that people can see him when they look at us. Let me say that again. God uses us so that people can see him when they look at us. We cannot stop shining. Yes, God says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Somebody put amen in the comment section. You see, my brothers and sisters, we must continue to shine. The stakes are too high. The cost is too grave. The praise is too important. We must continue to shine. We must shine as we look at this current context of our community. We must shine as long as law enforcement does more hurt and harm than help. We must shine. Not all are bad, but we got to get rid of the bad ones. We must shine as long as more funds exit our community than enter our community. We must shine as long as the lamp and light of heaven is being hid under the basket of religious rights and far right conservatism. We must shine as long as the blood of Jesus only flows in the pews of the sanctuary and not in the public of and not in the public streets of society. We must shine as long <clears throat> as social injustice still shows its systemic self in modern society. We must shine as long as young males are being directed towards incarceration, incarceration rather than education. We must shine as long as the educational experience of African Americans are secondary to Caucasian Americans. We must shine as long as the pulpit is being pimped, that the, as long as the pews are being prostituted and the church is being crucified and Christ is being cut out and members are being misled. We cannot stop shining. <clears throat> 
It's time for us to shine, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. We must shine. Now is the time to shine. Here is the place to shine. We must shine. We, we, we have to shine. It's time to shine. It's time to wake up. It's time to stand up. It's time to show up. It's time to speak up. It's time to get up, grow up, go up, and, 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 and ascend up higher to a place. Why? Because Christ Jesus got up for us. Yeah. If, I was, if, if we had an organ, if I was here, I tell you, he died, but he didn't stay dead. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up with the power, and that same power that he arose from the grave, he gave unto us. He gave us the power to change our community communities, the power to change our cultures, the power to change our churches, the power to change our social climates, the power to preach with purpose, the power to do his divine will. He gave us the power and I don't know who I'm talking to on today but I have a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that somebody is getting some, some, some glow and some flow back to your bulb that was starting to burn out. I don't know who I'm talking to. Just talk to me in the comment section but is there anybody praying with me on today who's made up in their minds? I I will not stop shining. Yes, God, I will not stop shining. I'm going to shine for Jesus. I'll be shining in my church. I'm shining in my communities. I'm shining in my schools. I'm shining in my job. I'm shining even on a Zoom call. I'm shining on a conference call. I'm shining everywhere I go. Is there anybody here who can sing the words of the old, old hymn? of the hymn of the old church let the light from the lighthouse shine on me that I'm gonna shine for God every day we cannot stop shining stakes are too high calls and time is too important we cannot stop shining hallelujah for this is the word of the Lord I want to I want to talk to you today and I want to encourage you to continue to allow your light to shine. Don't let the light go out. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. This word that you've given. That's a light for us. A lamp. A directive. A guide. And a direction. Now, Father, we pray. Your will be done. Hold us. Touch us. Be with us. Get the glory out of all that we do. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus name. Amen. Listen, if you're here today and you have not given your life to Christ, I wanted to invite you to get that right relationship with him. It's on the screen. I want you to text the word save, S-A-V-E, to 864-319-3190. And in doing that, our team will reach out to you and connect with you and be able to walk you through your next steps of a new life with God. Additionally, if you're looking for a church home and you feel that even through the cyber sanctuary that God has placed it on your heart to come connect to partnership with us, we'd love to be connected with you. Do me a favor. Text the word one O N E to eight, six, four, three, one, nine, three, one, nine, zero. We'll reach out to you and make contact and guide you as to your next steps. This is One Church. We love you and we thank you for staying connected with us. God is guiding us through this time and we know the numbers are inclining and on a roller coaster and even Pickens County is one of the hottest and highest counties uh, with new cases. We're still believing God is a healer and a divine deliverer. So we're praying for your safety. We pray that God will govern and guide you. As always, you did hear heard announced earlier. We're reminding you that this coming Saturday, this Saturday, beginning at 11 a.m., we are feeding the community. It's our fourth Saturday feeding the community. And we want you to come and to be a part of that. If you have not signed up, you can sign up. Simply text the word reach R E A C H reach to eight six four three one nine three one nine zero. 
and you'll receive a text back and it will have the link that you can sign up to volunteer and help in service throughout the day. We love you and we thank you. We want God's final blessings on us. And don't forget, once again, at the end of this broadcast, beginning at 1145, parents, go ahead, take a little potty break. Let your kids take a little potty break, maybe get a snack and have them tune in. Be ready at 1145 because from 1145 until 1230, our Kids Zone is Zooming. Go Zoom with Kids Zone right after this worship service. We've revamped it. We've, we've taken it and, and flipped it to allow it all to flow succinctly together. So after our worship, we can go right into there. And so between 1030 and by 1230, your day is done with everything that you need to do to go along this week. We're excited and we're grateful to be able to connect with you once again. Before we depart, let us pray and ask God's blessings on our time. For the remainder of the day and the week Let us look to the Lord Father thank you now For what we've been able to experience in worship Go govern and guide us Be with us Also be with our children uh, At 1145 in their Zoom God be with us on Wednesdays at 645 With our lesson starting at 7 For our Wednesdays in the word We love you we thank you Let our light can help us And allow help us to allow our light To continue to shine for you We thank you now May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go with God, God with you. We love you. See you next time. Right here, One Church.